So I have created a sample for this because I have several students who are struggling a bit with this, but the W3 school site has some excellent things on the advanced CSS styling. So we're going to start with the CSS combinators. We have the descendant selector, which is space, a child selector, which is that greater than less than sign, an adjacent sibling selector, and a general sibling selector. We're only using one or the other. So for the descendant selector, and this is the one I use the most, it's just basically a P inside a div. And you can look at the try it yourself, and you can play with these. So here, div P, and these are paragraphs that aren't in a div, and we could change, because it's still a section in here, we could even go further than that and do section, I want it to work, section and we can get more specific that way. So in my example here, and I'll put this out there, I have my descendant selector. Let's go ahead and inspect this. It'll let us sort of let's look at the sources. That's really all I need to see here. So we've got my descendant selector, descendant H1. You can see the color is green. I've changed that here. And then I've got descendant H2, where I've made the background gold. So it's the H2 tag <coughs> inside the descendant and that's a div with the ID of descendant. So it's inside the descendant ID div H1 becomes green. And since I, this was also an H1, that also becomes green. And then we look at the child selector. This is a greater than sign, div greater than P. Let's take a look at it here. <coughs> And so paragraph three is in the div, but it's not a child. So you can see how that changes. So sometimes child and descendant can be used interchangeably. So in my code, let me minimize that and just flip out to the website. The child code, I'm of H3 changing. So child H3 of the child ID div has the color of chocolate. Sibling, these are inside of sibling. So this is both a descendant and a sibling. I've got the H1 plus H2. So the H2 that's a sibling of H1 that's next to it gets a background of light blue. The pseudo class that we've used traditionally for doing hover uh, for our links, but I have it as just hover for list items. So it's pseudo class space li hover. A pseudo element is a little different. You're using the double colons here. And so I've got a font variant of small caps and a font weight of bold. And please notice that as the words change, anything going into that top line will change well. That is well. So let's flip back. So that's the CSS combinators, CSS pseudo class. Again, this is typically something that is used with anchors, links, visited links, mouse over links, pseudo elements, break down other things that are a specific part of the element. I'll be honest with you, I very rarely use this, but the first line element, it's good to know how to do that. That's the only one that I play with, really. Then we're going to get into CSS opacity, and this is for images. So here's the result, default, here's the 0.5, here's the 0.2. So in my sample, I have an opacity here, and I have an opacity of 0.6. And you can see if I change this, and I love working this way because you can see how it changes right as I'm in here. So you can make that, and we could add a hover to that if we wanted to make it change. In fact, that's part of the 
assignment. Now for the navigation bar, this is a good example of where to use something like this because it gives you all of the code. And this is a place where you could copy and modify it to meet yours. But then if you're you taking, my general rule is if you're taking more than four lines of code on the lesson, you don't need to do it. I know you're getting it from here, but it gives you the code for a vertical navigation bar with all of the code. So you can take this and modify it for your own list. But you're basically setting your list style type to none, margin and padding zero, width is 200 pixels, and then the background color is gray. And when you mouse over it, the display is blocked that makes the whole thing clickable instead of just the name. The color, that's the font color, text decoration none, padding is set. And then we change it on hover. So you can take that code and modify it to your own colors and that. And again, since it's specifically coming from this page, you don't need to cite it. But what if you're using it in a project, you should provide in the comments a link back to this page to show where you got it from. And then the last one we have you do is an image gallery. And it's just putting a div with an image and some code. And this is another one where you can pretty much take the code and modify it. So don't use this exactly the way it is. Play with the colors, play with things like that. So in my samples, I've only done one for the image gallery and it's cute puppy, but I could have put more in here. So that's a sample and I'll put this up. It's not, I'm not doing exact copies of the web pages that I'm doing anymore because I want you to be, actually have to look at it and make it work. So I'm not giving you the answers in the sample assignment, but I will put this up as well for um, showing you how it works together.